Good day everyone, my name is Loretta Otamosa and welcome to the sixth lesson of our course for microeconomics. In this lesson, we will focus on the utility maximization and this video will be a two-part video discussion. Ready? Let's go! So our intended learning outcomes for this video discussion are the following. First is to understand the theories of economics of satisfaction and second, to understand the importance of budget. Ready? Let's dig in! So in this section, we try to explain how consumers attain maximum satisfaction level on the many goods and services available to them for consumption. However, we have to remember that at this point, that satisfaction is a relative term. So this is because we differ in the way we are satisfied as well as the degree of our satisfaction. So as we have said earlier, no two consumers have the same likes and dislikes. And so let's discuss first about the utility theory. So in economics, utility refers to the satisfaction or pleasure that an individual or consumer gets from the consumption of a good or service that's the purchases. So for economic analysis purposes, the utility is also measured by how much a consumer is willing to pay for a good or service. Therefore, utility theory is an economic hypothesis that postulates the fact that consumers make purchases decisions based in the degree of utility or satisfaction they obtain from the given item. This means that the higher the utility level, the higher the item will be prioritized in the consumer's budget. And so, let us take a closer look through a video presentation prepared to us by Can Academy. Here, let's watch this. We are now going to introduce ourselves to the idea of utility in economics. Now, in everyday language, if someone says, what's the utility of that? They're usually saying, what's the usefulness of doing that? And utility in economics takes that view of utility and extends that a little bit. You could view utility in economics as a measure of usefulness, usefulness, worth, value. Some economists will even say it's a measure of happiness because things that might not have a practical use can still have utility to them in economics because they're giving you some satisfaction or some happiness. So I'll even write that over here. And as we'll see, it is something that economists try to measure or try to quantify and they do it with just utility units. So let's see a tangible example of that. So let's say you wanted to think about your utility from scoops of ice cream. So if we say, let's make a call, let's make a table here. So number of scoops, that'll be in my left column. And on my right column, let's think about total, total utility. And I will do it in utils. You could view that as your unit of utility. And let me put my columns in here. So there we go. And so let's say if I have zero scoops of ice cream, well, you might guess what my utility is going to be. It is going to be zero. Now, what if I have one scoop of ice cream? Well, let's just say that that is 80 utility units. And I know what you're thinking. Sal, where did you come up with 80 utility units? And this is really just an arbitrary number that I'm throwing down here. What's more important is what this is relative to my utility for other things. So for example, using this scale, if I said two scoops of ice cream, my total utility is 140. 80 and 140 aren't what matter. What matters is the ratio between the two. So if I said my utility for one scoop of ice cream was 800, then if this ratio is true, then for two scoops of ice cream, my total utility would be 1,400. It could be 8 million and 14 million. What matters is the relative utility. I just happened to anchor on one scoop gives me eight units, total utility units. But let's keep going. If we go with this scale, then three scoops of ice cream, let's say that this gives me 180 units of utility. And I know what you're saying, well, how, even if you get the ratio right, how do you even know that this is the right ratio? Well, economists will debate how to measure this, but there might be ways that uh, you could measure it maybe with dollars, with, with what people are willing to pay, and then you can get the ratios. You could survey people, you could say on a scale of 10, one to 10, how happy will it make you if you got one scoop of ice cream? What if you got two scoops of ice cream? What if you got three? And then you would want to get these ratios, right? But of course, it is an inexact science, but people are trying to quantify this. And let's just go to four. 
four scoops of ice cream would give you a total utility. Let's say we knew it would give you a total utility of 170. Now something interesting is happening. As you got more scoops of ice cream from zero to one, to from one to two, from two to three, it looks like you are getting more utility. But then all of a sudden, when you have four scoops of ice cream, your total utility goes down a little bit. Maybe it's because people can't eat four scoops of ice cream and they say, what do I do with that? And it's, they just have a, they're left with a bowl of melted ice cream. And so it doesn't give them as much utility. It makes them feel bad somehow as having three bowls of ice cream or three scoops of ice cream. Another thing to think about is how much does the total utility increase every time you get an incremental unit of that thing? And we'll talk about it in more depth in future videos, but that general idea of how much more utility you get for that incremental unit in, eco in economics, when we're talking about what happens on the increment, we use the word marginal a lot. Marginal utility, utility sometimes abbreviated MU, and this would still be in utility units. And so we could start with that first going from zero to one, I'll start with that first scoop of ice cream with some marginal utility. Well, it gave you an incremental 80 units of utility. So the marginal utility is 80. Now what about that second scoop of ice cream? Well, we know when you had one, you had 80 total utility units. And now when you have two, you have 140. So that incremental second scoop gave you to go from 80 to 140, it gave you 60 extra units of utility. So notice, you were really, it really increased your happiness or you got a lot of value out of that first scoop and you still got value out of that second scoop, but it's a little bit less because you're not maybe just as not as hungry, you're getting a little bit tired of the ice cream. And then that continues to happen on that third scoop. To go from 140 to 180, that third scoop gave you 40 units of utility. And then as we talked about, when you add on that fourth scoop, it didn't even add to your total utility. It took away from your total utility. So it actually had a negative marginal utility. It is negative 10. That fourth scoop actually took away from your happiness. So I will leave you there. You have this idea of utility, total utility, and we also looked at marginal utility. And you see in this example, and this is typical, that marginal utility typically decreases as you get more and more units of that thing. And in future videos, we're going to use this framework of utility, total utility, marginal utility to think about how folks might make rational decisions to optimize their total utility. Ready? Amazing, right? So it simply tries to explain how our satisfaction or utility as consumers decline when we try to consume more and more of the same good at a particular point in time. So two important concepts need to be explained before we totally understand the utility theory. These are the marginal utility and the total utility concept. And so let's try to discuss this one by one. When we say marginal utility, it is defined as the additional satisfaction that an individual derives from consuming an extra unit of a good or service. So in economics, we use marginal analysis to examine the effects of adding one extra unit to or taking away one unit from some economic variable. Therefore, marginal utility in economics the additional satisfaction or benefit that a consumer derives from buying an additional unit or a commodity or service. So the concept implies that the utility or benefit to a consumer of an additional unit of a product is inversely related to the number of units of the product he already owns. Therefore, a commodity's marginal utility is the increase in total utility or satisfaction derived from the consumption of an additional or extra unit of such commodity. It is the loss of utility or satisfaction if one unit less is consumed. In other words, it is the change in the total utility that results from one unit increase in the quantity of a good consumed. On the other hand, total utility is the total satisfaction that a consumer derives from the consumption of a given quantity of a good or service in a particular time period. We can also say that Total utility is the total benefit that a person gets from the consumption of a good or service. So total utility refers to the sum of utility that an individual derives from the consumption of all the units of a given commodity at a point or over a period of time. 
In other words, the total satisfaction derived from the consumption of various units of goods and services is called total utility. So every unit of a commodity has its marginal utility, a utility derived from the consumption of an additional unit. And the total utility is the summation of all these individual marginal utilities. So total utility depends on the quantity of a good consumed. More consumption generally gives more total utility. Hence, our total utility usually increases as we consume more and more of a good or service. But generally, the increase is at a slower or declining rate. So this implies that each extra unit consumed adds less and less marginal utility than the previous units consumed as we become satiated with the good or service we are consuming. Now, here's a video presentation prepared to us by Khan Academy for the graphical illustration of total utility and graphical illustration of marginal utility. Let's all watch this. What we're going to do is think about the graphs of marginal utility and total utility curves. And so right over here, I have a table showing me the marginal utility I get from getting tennis balls. And so it says, look, if I have no tennis balls, then I'm not able to play tennis. So I'm pretty happy when I get that first ball. It gives me a marginal utility of 100. Now you might say, 100 what, Sal? And I would say to you, well, that's the thing about marginal utility. We're using fairly abstract units here. We're not speaking in terms of dollar or opportunity cost. We just have this abstract unit we could call it utility units if we want. But what really matters is the relation between these values. So for example, that second ball, it's nice. Now I can lose that first ball or I don't have to chase that first ball around as frequently. But it's not as, I don't get as much incremental utility that I, as I got from that first ball. That first ball allowed me to play tennis. Now the second ball, I was already playing tennis, now my tennis is just going to be a little bit more pleasant. So the marginal utility, one way to think about it, this is 80 and this is 100, the marginal utility of that second ball is 80% of what that first ball is. Now I promised that I would graph these, so let's get a graph out here. So there we go. And let's start plotting these and see what it looks like. Well that first ball gave me a utility of 100. The second ball gives me a utility of 80. Third ball, you see the trend. This is a downward sloping, if this was a line, these are discrete values here, but if I cared about uh, half of a tennis ball or three fourths of a tennis ball, then I could connect the dots here as well. But you can see that it is a downward sloping line if you were to connect the dots. So three balls, utility of 60. If I have four balls, it's a utility of 40. Five balls, utility of 20. And once again, when I get that fifth ball, yeah, it's nice, but now my pockets are getting pretty full and I was all it's hard to play tennis with those full pockets. By the time I get that sixth ball, I get no marginal utility from that. I'm I, I don't have a place to store it. It's I don't really I'm not really into it. And then that seventh ball, I actually view it as a negative. It's one extra ball to worry about. No place to store it. It's it's taking up space in my life. And so if you were to connect the dots, we're talking about a discrete case, but oftentimes you could think about something that's a little bit more continuous or the quantity is more granular if you said pounds of chocolate or, or, or something like that. And then you could imagine in general for a marginal utility curve to be able to connect these dots. And you see in this case, it is downward sloping. So this is the marginal utility, the marginal utility curve. Notice that it is slopes down, slopes down. And this you're generally going to see this for any marginal utility curve because the incremental benefit of that next amount, that next unit, is seldom as good as the benefit of getting it before. You get tired of the thing. You start running out of space. You've already consumed more than you need of it. And this is consistent with what we know from the law of demand. In the law of demand, every incremental amount of quantity, people are like, well, I already have some. And this might not be, the law of demand is not talking about just an individual, it's talking about a market. But the market as a whole where is made up of individuals. And if each individual is saying, hey, you know, that, that first unit really matters to me, but the next unit, it's nice, but not as good, so I'd pay less for it. And then the unit after that, it's nice, so I might pay less for it. And so if you aggregate all those individuals, that's where that law of demand comes from. These are consistent ideas. And that's why the demand curve, you are also, it is sloping down. Price is usually on this axis instead of utility. And you could imagine price as being a proxy for utility. And, and quantity, of course, is on this axis right over here. So this is quantity of balls. 
So that's our marginal utility curve. What about total utility? So let me have a table here that shows total utility. And total utility from marginal utility is pretty straightforward. All you do is say, OK, well, that first ball, when I have one ball, my total utility is the same as my marginal utility. And so you're going to have that same starting place at when your consumption is just beginning. But then your total utility from two balls, well, I had 100 utility units from the first ball, and then I get 80 more from that second ball, so it's going to be 180. So for two balls, my total utility is 180. All I'm doing is I just added that to that. Now for three balls, I add that to that to that. I take 180 and I add the 60 extra utility units I get for that third ball, and now I'm at 240. So that third ball gives me gets me to 240 right over there. Now the fourth ball, once again, I'm just going to take 240 and add the incremental utility of that fourth ball, the marginal utility of that fourth ball. That gets me to 280. So that gets me to 280, which is right over, let's see, 20, 30, 20, 40, 60, 80. So this is right over there. Now that fifth ball, I'm just going to take the 280, and then the marginal utility of the fifth ball, add 20, gets me to 300. Fifth ball gets me to 300, which would be right around there. Now the sixth ball gave me no incremental, no marginal utility. So my total utility, when I have six balls, stays the same. I'm in, indifferent as to whether I have five or six balls. So the sixth ball, it is now flat right over here. And now the seventh ball, I'm tired of these tennis balls. I'm being overwhelmed by them. I'm finding it stressful. And so it actually has a negative marginal utility. And so my total utility, if someone forced me to have seven balls, my total utility would now go down by 20. And so my total utility now would be 280 right over here. And you could see the marginal utilities here if you just say, look, this is plus 80, this is plus 60, this is plus 40, this is plus 20, this is plus zero, and then this is minus 20. And so you see the numbers right over right over there. Now, this tennis ball example, this would be a discrete case. You, you wouldn't have half a tennis ball or, or pi tennis balls or something like that. But if we want to speak in general terms, you could think about connecting the dots if you had a more continuous example. And your total utility curve might look something like this. Now, what's interesting is right when you're beginning consumption, you're starting at the same place. Well, that makes sense. Your first unit, yet marginal utility, that's going to be your total utility. And this is upward sloping as long as you're getting some positive marginal utility from each increment. So as long as my marginal utilities were positive, well, this, slo the, the, this, this graph is going to be increasing. But notice, because the marginal utilities are, getting, are decreasing right over here, the rate of increase for total utility is decreasing. The slope here is decreasing. You can view the marginal utility as the slope of the total utility curve. And then notice, the total utility curve has a maximum value. It's starting to hit a maximum value right over there when the marginal utility curve is hitting zero. Because beyond that point, where at least in this example, we had negative marginal utility. And so when you add that seventh unit, well, that's going to make your total utility curve go down. And so you're going to have a negative slope in this particular example. And there you have it, the difference between graphical illustration of total utility and graphical illustration of marginal utility. Now let's proceed to law of diminishing marginal utility. Now this law states that as a consumer gets more satisfaction in the long run, he experiences a decline in his satisfaction for goods and services. This means that the consumption of more successive units of the same good increases total utility, but a decreasing rate because marginal utility diminishes. And so, let's take a closer look through a video presentation prepared to us by One Minute Economics. Here, let's watch this. To explain the law of diminishing marginal utility, we need to obviously understand what utility and marginal utility are. 
Simply put, utility is a term economists like to use to describe the satisfaction you feel after consuming a product or service, whereas marginal utility represents the increase in utility you experience after consuming one more unit of that product or service. The law of diminishing marginal utility, also called Gossen's first law, as a tribute to Hermann Heinrich Gossen, simply states that as you consume more, the marginal utility usually goes down. In other words, a glass of orange juice provides a lot of satisfaction when you're thirsty. You can drink another one, but it won't provide as much satisfaction as the first. A third glass might give you additional satisfaction, but not much, whereas as of a certain point, we're in negative utility territory because let's just say you probably won't feel too well after drinking the tenth glass. Of course, there are exceptions, anything from deriving more pleasure from binge-watching several episodes of a show rather than just one, to enjoying your stamp collection more as you continue adding to it, but all in all, the law of diminishing marginal utility provides a decent glimpse into how humans consume. Ready? Therefore, additional utility gained from an increase in consumption decreases with each subsequent increase in the level of consumption. So marginal utility is the change in total utility due to a one unit change in the level of consumption. The law of diminishing marginal utility states the marginal utility gradually decreases with the level of consumption, utility being defined as satisfaction or benefit. And in other words, as we consume more and more of a good or service, we like it less and less. And as we consume increasing amounts of a good or service, we derive diminishing utility or satisfaction from additional unit consumed. Ready? And that's it for the part one of this video discussion. See you in part two. Goodbye!